Okay, in your book, if you have a look on page four, we're now looking at the next little section called Solving Equations, and that's where I will start <coughs> and work through the problems here. Now, the key thing in solving equations, you must keep both sides of the equation balanced. Okay, that's the first uh, sentence there that's under the heading. So the example that we have here, very simple example, but we can work through it nice and simply, is this one. So 4x minus 12 is 16. Now, is that okay? Yeah, that's lovely. Good. Okay, now you may recall at school, from school days, let's go back a few years <laughs> for some of you, school days, one teaching method was to add the opposite. I'll put that in. It's not in the booklet, but this is helpful for some of you who may remember this. So, for example, step one, the teacher would say, okay, this is what you can do. All right, now this is minus 12. We add 12 here, 16, add 12 here. So adding the opposite is this term. Now, we've done it to both sides, so they are still balanced. But in doing that, the teacher then would have said, OK, why we do that is because they cancel out. The next line shows that minus 12 plus 12 cancels out to give me 28 here. And step 3, if I divide both sides now by 4, because I just want 1x, then x finally in step 4 will give me 7, which is in fact the answer in your book. This was the old-fashioned way, very good but a little bit slow. We want you to be a little bit quicker than this, so what we do now is use my little rule, and I'll show you this. This is really quick. It's the same thing. So we'll look at the alternative method. It gives you the same answer, but much faster, and this is what we want. So here we go. 4x minus 12 equals 16. That's what we start with. Step 1. <coughs> Now, my method here says this. If I can take this to the other side, this is much quicker. Now, the rule that I'm using, and I'll write this down. It's in your book at the bottom of the page. It says I can change side, but I must change the sign of the operation. and that's in your book right at the bottom of page 4. So applying this, this becomes very quick. We now have 4x equals 16 minus 12 on this side becomes plus 12 on that side. Step 2, I now have 4x equals 28. If I divide by 4, then x will equal 7. This can be done in your head after you get a lot of practice. You don't need to go back to this method here. It's the same thing, but this is much quicker. Change side, change sign of the operation. Okay, so there we have it. Now, that's at the bottom of page four. I'm now turning over. Let's have a look at the examples on page five, and we can work these through. Let's consider this example. You may have something like this. X divided by 36 equals 4 over 9. <coughs> okay, if you read in your book, uh, the second line there says we can use a rule called the multipli cross multiplication rule. Now, the cross multiplication rule is quite handy. Watch this. If I give you this, so for example, 12 uh, over, say, 6 equals, <coughs> let's see, 4 over 2. Now, six, uh, 12 over 6 gives us 2. The answer is 2. 4 over 2 also equals 2. So the left-hand side of the equation equals the right-hand side. So we start with something that is true anyway. Now, the cross-multiplication rule says this. If I multiply these two together and these two together, see, there's the cross. You multiply them together and look what happens. 6 times 4 equals 12 times 2. 6 4s are 24. 
two twelves are twenty four so left hand side equals the right hand side okay now that is true so if that's true then whenever you're given an equation and you say that the left hand you're told that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side you can then go straight into the cross multiplication rule so straight away I do this 36 times 4 there's that one must equal 9 times x and there's the cross step 2 working this out well I can leave that as it is if I divide both sides by 9 that cancels 9 to that is 4 x will equal hopefully in your book will give you 16 okay so that's halfway down your book 16 which is your answer there so we prove it in number theory then we can apply it when we need to solve for the variable which is unknown in this case we want to find what x is now this is an interesting one because I'll show you this it's not in the book but good students when they're dealing with algebra they always either mentally perform a check now let's see if we can do this okay if 16 is the right answer you should be able to put it into X and work it through in other words 36 by 4 should be the same as 16 by 9 if you're not sure you can use your calculator that's going to be 144 and that's going to be 144 so we know we're right so this is important even if you don't get extra marks for it in an exam it gives you peace of mind that you know you know for a fact that that indeed is the right answer okay let's have a look at the next one in your booklet about two-thirds of the way down it says consider the next problem now we have 2x minus 1 over 3 equals 7 now you think ah hang on now we've got a problem if we go back to the previous problem here we had one term over another equaling to one term over another in other words here we had four distinct terms okay but when you look here you don't you've only got this term over this one equals this one in other words it appears as though there are only three terms so what I'm going to show you now is a little trick where you create the fourth term you create the fourth term by doing that you put one because any letter or number written down is automatically understood to be over 1 so we rewrite this as 7 over 1 now look the point about that is you can cross multiply so step 1 3 times 7 equals 1 times 2x minus 1 so 3 sevens are 21 1 times anything is just itself so there we are <coughs> the beauty about the cross multiplication rule is why I like to use it whenever I can is it gets rid of fractions these in fact are equivalent fractions this fraction here equals this one but people don't like fractions generally there's uh, a fear of how to handle fractions the cross multiplication rule gets rid of that and now look at this we've got a simple straightforward equation and I can manage this quite easily using the technique that I did before this minus 1 remember change side change sign of the operation so for step 2 I will write down 21 plus 1 equals 2x minus 1 on this side becomes plus 1 on this side so therefore finally step 3 since 22 equals 2x divide both sides by 2 then x must equal 11 as it is in the bottom of your book correct answer